Hello everybody, uh, welcome to this massive open online course on solid fluid operations. So, today we will start a uh, second module, this is regarding that uh, size reduction of the particle. Uh, in the previous lecture we have discussed the brief introduction on solid fluid operations and uh, the characteristics of solid fluid uh, and uh, also its uh, importance. In this uh, module, we will start with uh, the lecture on mechanism of size reduction. So, in this lecture we will try to discuss uh, about the importance of particle size reduction, mechanism of particle size reduction, fracture mechanism, power requirement and efficiency in size reduction. So, what is the importance of particle size reduction? Where that particle size reduction to be important? Where it will be used? Why I should reduce the size of the particle? So, whenever you are going to reduce the size that will require some energy, that energy will produce new surface area. That surface area is required for any physical or chemical processes. So, the size reduction uh, will be based on a certain mechanism. So, it may be used to create particles of a certain size and shape and also whenever you are going to reduce the size, it will increase the surface area which will be available for chemical reaction or to liberate some valuable minerals that is held within the particles. It is an energy intensive process. You will see that in industry around 5 percent of all electricity used which will be you know utilized in size reduction. So, to obtain workable size, to obtain powders, to obtain specific shape and size, increase reactivity, permit separation of you know unwanted ingredients from the mixer. So, for those purposes the reduction of the size of the solid or materials is required. Now, you will see that whenever you are going to reduce the size or you are reducing the size, it will improve the uniformity of the mixing between solid and liquid or solid and solid. You will get uniformity of the mixing for the reduced size particles. If the size of the particle is small, you will see that the flow of powder into dyes during the compression of tablet is very effective. So, in that case the production of the tablet and its compression you need to reduce the size of the particle. To repeat the effective drying, it is a physical process whenever drying operation will be there, there will be mass transfer or you can say that the transfer of the vapor or so moisture from the solid particles to the atmosphere by evaporation. So, to repeat this effective drying, you need to have more surface area through which that mass transfer will happen or drying or moisture, removal of moisture will happen. So, if the size of the granules is a small, then the drying of granular mass will become rapid. Also, you will see that sometimes you need to improve the physical stability in suspensions and emulsions. So, the rate of sedimentation you will see that it will decrease if the particles are of a small and uniform in size. To facilitate rate of dissolution, you need to increase the surface area. So, there dissolution of the substance can be increased by increasing more surface area. So, to get this more surface area, you need to reduce the size of the particle. Also, to improve the absorption rate or adsorption rate, you will see that you will have better adsorption on the surface of the particles. Like if you want to adsorb carbon dioxide or other gaseous sulfur dioxide or hydrogen sulfide onto an activated carbon particles, you will see that if you have more surface area, there will be a efficient you know adsorption for that operation. 
So, to improve adsorption rate, smaller the particle, the faster is the adsorption because of increase in surface area. So, to improve that adsorption process, you need to have more surface area. Similarly, if suppose this absorption happened, absorption and adsorption both are different. Absorption generally gaseous molecules will be you know transferred from the gaseous mixtures to the liquid. Whereas, adsorption is a D, adsorption is the gaseous molecule to be transferred from the gaseous mixture to the solid. So, that is adsorption. So, whichever is that you need to have more interfacial area, interface between two phases either gas or solid or gas or liquid. So, to create more interfacial area to get the more solid gas or solid liquid interface you need to reduce the size of the particle. Then you know some key properties of the solids which is to be known to designing a process or selecting an equipment in that case you have to you know reduce the size of the particle. You have to know what will be the size distribution in the feed whether it is in wider size distribution or narrow size distribution. Wider size distribution will give you the wide range of particle size, narrow size distribution will give you the almost uniform size of the particles. So, to get the better mixing or more dissolution or better you know reaction performance you need to have you know narrow size distribution of the feed. Then particle shape, density, elasticity, hardness, brittleness and friability are also more important for the analysis of the performance whenever you are going to use this particle. So, if you have different shape particles, different density particles, its elasticity behavior is different, hardness behavior is different, you will see that their applicability of that particles for that physical or chemical processes will be different. So, that is why to get uniform size, uniform shape you have to you know reduce the size of the particle. Again if you reduce the size of the particle you can increase the flowability, sometimes cohesiveness will increase and adhesiveness will increase though it will be not suitable for any you know give better yield for that processes. So, in that case flowability can be increased which is very you know acceptable for transporting the materials from one point to another point. Whereas, cohesiveness will not be sometimes acceptable or it will not be you know that uh, suitable for that particular operation, but in that case you have to optimize the size of the particle, but you cannot use that bigger size or coarser size for that operation. So, you have to reduce up to a certain extent which is optimum in value. Then abrasiveness, stickiness, dust explosion characteristics are also important. You can reduce the size of the particles where you can get the you know optimum value which will give you the optimum stickiness, dust explosion and characteristics of that particle which will be useful for the assessment of the process. Again temperature sensitivity which will be more you know effective if you reduce the size of the particle and in that case degradation, stickiness and phase change will be you know effective for that particular reduced size. You will see that some property that you have to you know consider like corrosivity, you know that toxicity and composition, moisture, oil and fat content in the particles, fibrous morphology, reactivity or release of gases, shock sensitivity and explosiveness all those you know properties depends on the particle size. So, you need to have that optimum size okay, from the coarser size which can be used for a particular process analysis. Now, next question will come that what will be the mechanism by which we can get the reduction of the size of the particles. There are different mechanisms in this slide it is shown that there are basically four types of mechanisms are there, those are compression like um, impact, attrition, shear. Other than those you know basic you know mechanisms, you can use other different types of you know provisions 
or mechanism by which you can reduce the size like introduction of energy based on which you can reduce the size those energy will come from thermal shock explosive shattering and electro hydraulic forces. So, these are the mechanism by which you can reduce the size of the particle. Common mechanisms that we told that compression, impact, attrition, shear. What is compression? In that case you will see that particle disintegration or particle breakage will be happened by two rigid forces. Here in this uh, slide it is shown that compression in the C figure C two rigid surface in between there will be a particle and this particle breakage will happen by you know introducing two forces by this two rigid surfaces. Okay. Then impact particle breaks by a you know single rigid forces. Single rigid force there you will see in the uh, picture you will see that in D here one rigid surface will be there and solid particles will be broken by a rigid force okay, on the surface of this you know force that is created by this solid surface. And then attrition, attrition is basically what is that particle particle interaction whenever high kinetic energy will be utilizing to you know moves the particles whether random direction or in a particular fashion you will see that due to that energy transport the particles will be interacting to each other uh, this is happened basically in the you know fluidized bed or other you know star tank reactor where particle particle interaction will be more high in that case because of that interaction particles may be you know reduced its size by breaking. So, breaking of particles by scrapping between two surfaces that will be called you know attrition. Then shear by shear you will see that particles will be produced in its lower size based on compression between two edges of the hard surfaces. It is shown here in this uh, figure f in this case there will be a shear of these two surfaces. So, these are the some common mechanism by which you can you know reduce the size of the particles other non mechanical uh, you know mechanism like you know thermal shock explosive shattering and electro hydraulic force by which you can reduce the size of the particle. Now, I am in this case uh, let us uh, have an example here how size can be reduced by crushing here in this figure it is shown that if a single lump of material is subjected to a sudden impact in a gap of two jaws in a certain mechanical provision it is called jaw crusher. You will see that it will gener it will generally breaks so as to yield a few relatively large particles and a number of fine particles with relatively few particles which will be intermediate in size. What is the feed particles to be you know given here in this jaw crusher and what is the coming up of these uh, fine particles those particles may be in the intermediate range. Okay. So, here we can say that if a single lump of material is subjected to a sudden impact it will generally break into a finer one and uh, which will be with relatively few particles of intermediate size. Now, if the energy in the flow is increased the larger particles will be of a rather smaller size and more numerous whereas, the number of fine particles will be appreciably increased. So, we can say that if we reduce the size of the particles number of particles will be you know more whereas, the feed particles number will be less which will be broken into a finer ones give you more number of particles because of its reducing size. And also you will see that in case of impact mechanism for the size reduction kinetic energy of the particles is used to generate the degree of deformation that is required for the breakup of the particle. Okay. In this case you will see that a material is said to be brittle elastic if the deformation of the product is initially proportional to the applied stress. 
So, you have to apply some stress on the particles by which that will be broken. Now, if suppose the material is brittle elastic, if the deformation of the product is initially proportional to the applied stress, then you will see that the fracture of the particle will be happen suddenly. Now, initially you will see that in the linear range, the particle deformation will be elastic and also reversible, but as soon as higher stresses will be applied there, the material will absorb that you know higher stress and the material strength you know is exceeded locally and attacks into a sudden under that stresses and cracks immediately which are to be you know triggered. Okay. So, in the linear range we can say that initially particle deformation will be elastic and reversible, but whenever more stresses will be applied the material strength will be exceeded locally and cracks will be you know triggered. Now, the cracks grow extremely fast and lead to the destruction of the particle based on which that particle will be broken you know into a finer ones. So, you will see here how that fracture mechanism will be acting based on the applied stress here. You will see that particles are getting cracked after applying some you know stress. So, in this case some energy is required that energy required to effective size reduction and it will be related to the internal structure internal structure of the material and the process okay, will consist of two parts. In that case first of all you know that it will be opening up any smaller you know fissures which are already present in the you know material and then finally or secondly you can say it will form a new surface. So, first of all this energy which is required that of course, to be effective to get this you know material into cracked just by two mechanism one will be opening up any small fissures initially which are already present in that case and then just by absorption of the energy it will become or it will give you new surfaces just by breaking up. Then all large lumps of materials which will contains that cracks and size reduction occurs it will be a result of crack initiation and crack propagation. Okay. So, this crack initiation and crack propagation will occurs above a certain critical parameter that is represented by f and that f can be defined by tau square a by y. Here it is shown in the slide that equation this f is equal to tau square a by y. What is that tau? Tau is basically that applied stress on that particle and a is the crack length as shown in the picture and y is the Young's modulus. So, in this case this critical parameter will show you whether these particles will be broken up into a finer ones or not. So, at lower values of f elastic deformation occurs without fracture. So, in that case the particles will not be broken up into a two pieces or three pieces or more than that and the energy input is completely ineffective in that case for this achieving of that size reduction. So, you have to you know give the effective energy on the particles. So, that this critical parameter value will be exceeded from its you know critical value. Now, let us have this example what should be the critical parameter of a concrete material for different materials this critical parameter will be different. So, if you consider a concrete material you will see that what should be that critical parameter beyond which the material lose its elastic deformation if the crack length is 10 centimeter stress is 100 kilo Pascal and Young's modulus is of 17 into 10 to the power 9 Pascal. So, in this case we can easily calculate what should be the critical parameter here in this case for concrete material. In this case crack length is given it is measured 
as 10 centimeter that means 0 0.1 meter and stress is here tau is 100 kilo Pascal it is also applied stress here given based on which that cracks happen and Young's modulus is what is that y it is 17 into 10 to the power 9 Pascal as per this material characteristics. Now then what should be the critical parameter f that will be equal to tau square a by y that will be equal to tau is what is the values of tau it is you know that it is given I think uh, 100 kPa whole square then into 0 0.1 that is a value divided by y value is 17 into 10, 10 to the power 9. So, after calculation you will get this value as 0 0.06. So, this a value critical parameter is 0 0.06. So, beyond this critical value this all the concrete whatever it is it will be cracked into a smaller pieces. Okay. So, this is your critical parameter that you have to know. Some Young's modulus values are given for different materials in the slide like for aluminum, beryllium, you know that copper, bone compact, cadmium, carbon nanotube, rhodium, silver, nickel, thorium, tin and zinc all those materials have their different you know Young's modulus values. So, based on this Young's modulus values and the applied stress and from the experimental value of that crack length you will be able to find out what will be the you know critical parameter and based on which you will be able to assess whether that material will be you know broken up into a finer one or not. Then uh, here some you know uh, typical values uh, you will see that whenever particles will be you know broken up into a finer one there will be a creation of surface area more surface area. So, bigger particles will give you whatever surface area if you make into a finer one by reduction size reduction you will see that more surface area of the particle will be there. Now, in that case you need some energy okay, which is to be adsorbed on the surface. Now, order of that magnitude of the surface fracture energy per unit surface area typically for the glass it will be 1 to 10 joule per meter square plastic 10 to 10 to the power 3 joule per meter square and metals it will be you know 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 5 you know joule per meter square. Now, in the presence of a crack modifies the stress field in its immediate location that means from where that crack has started the increase in energy will be approximately proportional to the crack length and what is that distance from the crack tip. The stress field is proportional to square root of that a by l square root of a by l that means here we can say that the stress whatever applied that will be you know proportional to the square root of crack length and inversely proportional to the square root of you know distance from the crack tip. So, the presence of a crack which will be modifies the stress field in its immediate location with the increase in energy which will be proportional to this stress field and this is stress field again as a proportional to the square root of crack length and inversely proportional to the square root of you know the distance from the crack tip. Now, in this case you have to remember some important points that whenever the particles will be storing some energy for its uh, you know reduction of size the capacity of the particle for storing this energy is proportional to the volume of the particles that means you know proportional to the cube of the particle diameter. And also you can say that the energy requirement for propagating geometrically similar cracks is proportional to the surface area and the energy available per unit crack area that is increases linearly with particle size. So, these three points that you have to remember. Now, let us have an example it is said that by what factor will the stress field change if the crack length increases by 4 times 
and the distance from the crack tip does not change. Here we know that whatever energy you know is required to have this crack or make this crack that will be proportional to the stress field and that stress field is proportional to root over a by l where a is the crack length and l is the distance from the crack tip. Now, initial stress applied as per problem that will be equal to k into root over a by l here k is the proportionality constant and final stress that will be then k into root over 4 a l okay? that means crack length will be 4 times of that initial length whereas the distance from this you know crack tip will not be changed. So, in that case l will be remain same. So, it will be coming as 2 into k root over a by l. So, therefore, the stress field change by 2 factors. Okay? So, this is a simple problem by which you can easily understood what will be the you know energy required which is proportional to the stress field. Then one of the important point or important topics here that power requirement and efficiency in size reduction. It is required anyway for reducing the size you need to have you need to apply some energy that energy to be absorbed on the solid surface and based on that based on that absorption of that energy the particles will be you know breaking up into a finer ones. Now, how much energy will be required or what will be the energy for that you know reduction of that size that you need to calculate and also know. So, whenever stress is applied material are distorted and strained you know. Now, in that case some work will be required to strain which is stored as a mechanical energy till the ultimate strength is reached. So, you have to apply some stress that stress you know will give you the strain that means breaking up of the materials or you know that deformation of the materials that means strain you can calculate for that getting strain you have to do some work on that particles that work will be you know considered as energy mechanical energy. So, you have to keep that mechanical energy till the ultimate strength of the material will be risen. So, energy goes to increase in surface area and excess energy is liberated as heat. So, all the energy whatever to be supplied to the material will not be utilized for the breaking up some energy will be you know released as a heat. So, in that case we cannot say that 100 percent energy will be utilized for breaking up the material. So, in that case there will be some efficiency size reduction efficiency. Now, that size reduction can be done by crushing equipment or crusher you can say we will discuss in the next classes next you know lecture the different uh, types of crushing and what are the crushing uh, machine by which you can reduce the size of the particles. Now, what will be the efficiency of that size reduction by that crushing mechanism? So, this can be basically defined by here what will be the surface energy that is created by size reduction mechanism divided by energy absorbed by the material. Now, in this case it can be defined mathematically as E s into A s p minus A s f by W s. What is that? Here surface energy created by size reduction mechanism that can be calculated by E s into A s p minus A s f. Here E s is surface energy per unit area. What are the surface energy absorbed by the material per unit area? And then A s p specific surface area of the product P for here product and A s is basically specific surface area that means what will be the surface area that is created per unit mass of the material. And then A s f what is the specific surface area for the feed particles per unit mass of the material. So, that is represented by A s f and then W s is basically the energy absorbed by unit mass of the solid. So, one thing is that surface energy created the by surface energy you know absorbed. This is the very important point. So, what is the surface energy created that can be calculated by this you know here E s into A s p minus A s f and 
surface energy is absorbed by the material as W s. Okay. Now, this A s how you will calculate A s? S is the what that is? A s is basically the specific surface area either for product or feed. So, specific surface area is basically what is the surface area? Suppose you know, one single particle, a spherical particle, okay? or if it is not spherical, then you have to consider equivalent spherical diameter. For that, what will be the surface area? It will be pi d p square and divided by its mass that will be specific surface area. What is the mass? First of all, you have to calculate what will be the volume of that particle, that means pi by 6 d p q then you have to multiply it by density of the solid, then you will get what will be the mass of the solid. So, the surface area divided by mass of the solid that will be called as specific surface area. Now, energy absorbed by solid cannot be 100 percent we told, whatever energy is supplied by the shaft energy or mechanically that should not be utilized fully. This is due to the energy loss by conversion to heat energy. Hence, we can say that there is some mechanical energy of shaft energy for absorption by material to gates is size reduction. That means, some portion of the materials, some fractional energy will be utilized to get the particle its size in reduction form. That means, get its size reduction. What is that mechanical efficiency? That means, what is the energy absorbed by the material? This is W s and what is the energy supplied to the machine for this size reduction that is W. So, this mechanical efficiency will be basically W s by W. So, we can write from this equation as W will be equal to what? W s by eta m. What is this eta m? Eta m basically mechanical efficiency. Now, W s we know that in the previous equation W s is equal to what is that? E s A s p minus A s a by eta c by which you can calculate W s. So, we can write here W s is as like this, this is your W s and here eta m is the mechanical efficiency. So, from this equation number 4, you can easily calculate what will be the energy input to the machine and then what will be the power requirement? Power requirement is basically what will be the energy input to the machine into what will be the mass flow rate of the feed which will be you know process for its size reduction. So, that you can find it out. So, you have to just multiply by this mass flow rate with that energy input to the machine which will give you the power requirement. Now, let us do an example for this. A machine is used to reduce the size of a unpolished limestone of 5 kg for 1 minute and of equivalent spherical size of 50 millimeter. After size reduction of the limestone by the machine, it is found that average size of the particle is 5 millimeter. The reduction efficiency was calculated as 0 0.85. Now, you have to find out what is the energy absorbed by the material per kg of the limestone when it is mechanical efficiency will be uh, of the machine 0 0.90 and also the surface energy per unit area of the limestone at unpolished condition is 0 0.250 joule per meter square. Okay. So, you have to find out what is the energy absorbed by the material per kg of the limestone. So, how to solve this problem? In this case, you need to have you know what will be the energy absorbed by the material. So, energy, energy absorbed by the material is W s to calculate the W s you need to know that you know energy what is that you know energy absorbed by the material that means surface energy per unit area of the limestone that you need to know and also specific surface area for the product and feed okay. and then what is that crushing efficiency. So, first of all we have to calculate ASP. What is that ASP? ASP is the specific surface area for the product. So, it will be you know that pi dp square that is surface area for the product P for product here and dp here particle diameter divided by the mass of the particle 
here mass of the particle pi by 6 dp square here it will be dp cube into rho s ok. So, this will be your what is that mass of the particles. Now, what is the value it is given this is pi dp square if you you know dp square and dp cube then it will be cancelled it only dp will be there. So, it will be only 6 by dp then divided by rho s. So, it will be 6 by dp is 0 0.005 because the product size it is given as 5 millimeters. So, it will be 0 0.005 and then into 2709 is the density of the solid particle ok. So, it is coming as 0 0.443 meter square per kg. Similarly, for the feed ASF, ASF will be equal to pi dp square f divided by pi by 6 dp f cube into rho s. So, it will be again coming as 6 by 0 0.05, this is 0 0.06 uh, 0 0.05 is basically the you know equivalent spherical size of the feed particle which is given as 50 millimeter. So, it will be converting into meter like 0 0.0 yeah 50 millimeter then it will be 0 0.05 meter. So, here it will be uh, 6 by 0 0.05 into 2709. So, it will come as 0 0.0443 meter square per kg. Now, after substitution of this ASP and ASF here as 0.443 and 0.0443 and also what will be the you know surface energy per unit area as 0 0.250 it is given and then substituting the you know crushing efficiency which is given as 0 0.85 in the problem. Then after simplification we can get 0 0.117 joule per kg. Then you have to calculate what will be the you know power requirement to run the machine if the mechanical efficiency of the machine is given 0 0.90. So, P you have to calculate P power requirement which is W into M dot. What is the W? W is W s by eta m, W s that you can calculate or you have already calculated it is 0 0.117 joule per kg. Then this is here you have to substitute and then eta m is given 0 0.90, here it is given 0 0.90 mechanical efficiency and then what will be the mass flow rate it is given I think it is given 5 kg per 1 minute. So, you have to convert it to kg per second. So, 5 by 60, so ultimately it is coming 0 0.011 watt. So, in this way you can calculate what will be the power requirement ok to break the materials from its feed size to the product size at a particular rate of feed ok. So, I think you understood this problem and how to calculate the power and energy requirement for reduction of the size. We will also discuss regarding this size reduction there will be other you know theory to calculate the size reduction based on the feed size and product size that will be discussed in the uh, separate uh, lecture soon. So, uh, I think you understood this one and then also another problem here what is the power requirement if the energy as absorbed by the material is 2000 kilo joule if efficiency is 0 0.7 and the mass flow rate is 10 kg per hour. Here also in exactly the same the energy absorbed by material it is given 2000 kilo joule efficiency mechanical efficiency it is given 0 0.7 mass flow rate of the material it is you know m dot will be 10 kg per hour energy input to the machine that means w is equal to w s by eta m this is basically 2000 by 0 0.7 then it will come to 0.14 kilo joule and then power requirement will be equal to you know P that will be the W into M dot. So, which will be as 2857.14 into 10 by 3600. Here 10 by 3600 because this is given as 10 kg per hour it will be 10 kg per second. So, that is why you have to divide it by 3600. So, finally, it is coming as 7.94 kilo watt. So, in this way you can calculate what will be the power requirement for reducing the size of the material. So, I think you understood here what is the mechanism of the size reduction and uh, 
what is the you know power requirement, how to calculate it, what is the energy absorption, what is the mechanical efficiency and uh, what is the crushing efficiency, what is the surface area produced for that uh, particle uh, you know size reduction. Uh, so, uh, it will be very useful for you also uh, calculating in, uh, uh, for the further you know lecture whatever problem it will be discussed, uh, it will be required. So, I think you have understood this uh, you know size reduction mechanism here in this lecture. Uh, we will be discussing uh, more about that size reduction in the next lecture we will try to you know understand the machines for size reduction, what are the different machines will be used for the size reduction and what are those you know machines how uh, they are working and what are the capacities for that machines for the size reduction. So, thank you have a good day.